<laughs> Hello everyone. Today we're going to have a look at the circulation of the horse's leg and foot. A farrier needs to be intimately familiar with the circulation of the, the foot because what you do with trimming and shoeing can have a profound effect on the well-being of the circulation within the, the hoof in the foot itself. Think of the foot as the sensitive tissue inside the boot. The boot is the hoof. Of course, there is no circulation in the hoof itself. There are no blood vessels or nerves. So everything we're going to look at only pertains to the sensitive tissue within the hoof. So we'll start out with the arterial system. And if you learn the arterial system, you will pretty much know the complete system because the venous system, the drainage system, is uh, more or less a copy of the arterial system. Circulation is first of all promoted by the heart pumping blood around the horse's body and of course the lungs and infusing the blood with oxygen and then removing carbon dioxide. So it's essentially a closed system. You've got a pump and you have then the, the heart and then you have the lungs um, putting the oxygen in. The arteries take that oxygenated blood and pass it around the body where it's needed to uh, all the tissue. The capillaries, which are the smaller blood vessels, which uh, take it from the arteries and diffuse it out to the individual parts of individual tissues. And then the veins are the drainage system, which takes the deoxygenated blood and the blood that has carbon dioxide in it, which is a byproduct of uh, the uh, energy uh, use within the cells takes it back to the, the lungs. So it's essentially a closed system. Arteries are thick muscular walled tissues. If you think of an artery uh, a bit like a, a firm rubber hose, even if there's no blood inside the, or sorry, there's no water inside the hose, the hose still has shape. An artery is like that. It has muscular walls and it's the muscular walls which create the pulse that we can feel when you put your hand on a horse's leg. The uh, capillaries are very small. You can think of them as uh, soaker hoses in that they're permeable and blood can pass through the, the side wall of the capillary. They get very small. Another way to think of them would be the individual piping within your house going to individual rooms. The arteries are the main lines coming from the reservoir and then down the street and then gradually getting smaller and smaller until it comes into the house and it goes to individual rooms and by that point it would be akin to a capillary. And then veins start out really small and then gradually get bigger and bigger as they uh, increase the amount of uh, the volume of blood within them. Veins are uh, different from arteries in that they are thin walled. If there's no fluid in them, they collapse. So you could think of them like a canvas hose. And uh, they have, in the horse's leg, they have valves to stop backflow. Because the horse's leg is a vert vertical column and the uh, uh, action of the, the hoof and the foot is pumping blood back up the leg, back to the, the heart and the lungs. So the system that aids that is there a series of one-way valves in the horse's leg to stop blood draining back down within the veins. There are no valves in the veins within the horse's foot. The, the hoof and the foot kind of act as a valve by themselves as one massive valve in that when the horse loads its leg and it's fully loaded, blood flow in and out of the foot is restricted. Initially on, on impact, blood is pushed out of the foot, but when the foot is under full load, blood cannot get out of the foot. So essentially you have a hydraulic bath that the bone is sitting in. Now we'll go on to look at the individual arteries of the horse's leg. So we start out with a single artery which runs down the palmar face of the leg. So this is the main palmar artery and it branches proximal to the proximal sesamoids and becomes a medial and lateral branch and it's here that you would feel the pulse in a horse's leg. So now we, we call them the digital arteries, medial and lateral, pass down the leg, they form a circle, so this is the circumflex artery of P1, 
pass on down the leg, do the same thing again at P2. So circumflex artery of P2. And then send off branches to the proximal edge of the distal sesamoid and the distal edge of the distal sesamoid. So again, we have medial and lateral. So again, we have the medial, medial and lateral digital artery, circumflex artery of P1, circumflex artery of P2, the proximal uh, uh, artery of the distal navicular or distal sesamoid or navicular bone, the distal artery of the navicular bone or distal sesamoid, and then that medial and lateral branch of the digital artery passes through a large hole, a foramen, in the palmar face of P3 and forms a loop within the bone that you can't see without cutting away some bone. That is the terminal arch of the digital artery. Each branch of the digital artery also sends a branch off over the wing of P3. And I'll draw that on this diagram in a minute. <clears throat> the terminal arch of uh, the digital artery sends out branches within the bone that erupt through the dorsal face. I'm putting them here in a dotted line because they're within the bone. These branches do not come out through the solar surface of the bone. There are practically no blood vessels that come down through the bottom of P3. All the blood supply to the bottom of P3 and to the sole corium is over the edge of P3. So now if we draw this on the side view, it would look something like this. So over the sesamoid forms a loop around this bone, P1, forms a loop around P2. There's an additional loop which I didn't mention over here, which is the coronal artery, which would be in this region. So an additional branch on P2, and then this branch comes down and loops over the wing of P3 and runs along this groove, the parietal groove or dorsal groove of P3, and the rest of the artery passes in between the wings and forms this portion of the artery which passes through the foramen, joins up with the other artery, the other digital artery to form a loop and then they pass out branches within the bone that erupt through these holes and either come down to the distal border or just out onto the dorsal face to supply blood to the lamina which attach the hoof, hoof wall to uh, the bone itself. And some of these blood vessels head upwards towards the coronary band region to the coronary corium and some of them downwards to form the circumflex artery of P3. This large blood vessel branches off, some upwards, some along the dorsal face, and some downwards to the circumflex artery of P3. Circumflex artery of P3 lies along this sharp irregular border of P3. So again we have palmar artery, medial and lateral branch from here down is called the digital artery, so the medial and lateral branch circumflex artery of P1, circumflex artery of P2, the coronal artery, the proximal artery of the navicular bone, the distal artery of the navicular bone, 
the branches of the digital artery that pass within the uh, palmar or plantar foramen on the bottom surface of P3, the terminal arch, the branches within P3, which then erupt through the small foramen of the dorsal face of P3, some of them going down to unite to form the circumflex artery of P3, and some of them going upwards to the coronary corium of the coronary band region. This is the dorsal branch of the digital artery which has either come through a hole or over a notch on the wing of the uh, third phalange. Here's the one on the opposite side of the, the bone. And then the only ones that we've got left is a large artery which comes out the back to uh, supply blood to the bulbs of the, the heel of the horse's hoof. And then there's one more artery which supplies blood to the frog corium, which lies outside the bone, but on top of everything you have here. And that is the pericuneal artery. And it's just kind of frog shaped. The pericuneal artery. So this is the arterial system of the horse's leg. The other things that we need to look at are the, uh, the uh, fine mesh of blood vessels within the horse's foot, principally veins, and we call those the plexus. I've got a plastic model here which gives you a better idea of what all of this looks like. So here we have a plastic cast of the major blood vessels within the horse's foot. And you can see how they start out really large just proximal to the coronary band region, and then as we get further down, they get much smaller and finer. So when we're trimming and shoeing, the uh, one blood vessel that we should uh, have at the front of our mind um, when we're considering how much to take off a horse's hoof is the circumflex artery of P3. So this blood vessel right here. So when I draw it in here, you can appreciate just how easy it would be to have a significant impact on this blood vessel. It uh, lies right along that sharp irregular edge of the coffin bone and distal to it is the circumflex vein which is even larger. So if we take too much sole off a horse's hoof or shorten the wall too much we can compress the circumflex vein and then the circumflex artery which is going to cause the horse significant difficulty. First of all, the horse is going to be uncomfortable, just as you or I, if you were to trim our fingernails too short and then press on the end of your finger, it'll get sore. Exactly the same with the horse. But of course, as we all know, a horse has to stand on its legs. So the horse is going to be in some pain. And then the second part of it is no blood, no growth. So if you shut off the blood supply, the uh, growth rate is going to be significantly diminished and it will take some time before the horse will grow enough hoof to relieve pressure on those blood vessels. So again, circumflex artery of P3. The other vessel that we can have a significant impact on will be the pericuneal artery and vein, which lies just proximal or just above the frog on the bottom of the hoof. If you were to significantly trim the frog back so that you remove most of the keratinized or hoof frog, and uh, left little to cover the frog corium, you could be impacting this large pair of blood, or these large uh, blood vessels, the pericuneal artery and vein. And of course, they lie between the frog and the bone, not within the bone. The uh, blood vessels here in dotted lines are branches within the bone. <coughs> 